We're going to send Bye. you to Cleveland. Ooh. Sorry Maybe about you that. can help them with their playoff problem. Yeah. You're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo podcast with your hosts, Andrew Chang and Justin Goddard. Hello and welcome to the Wandering Buffalo podcast, a show on the Built in Buffalo network. My name is Andrew Chang, and of course, alongside me is my co host, Justin Goddard. Tonight, Justin and I are going to review the moves made by Brandon Bean since he's taken over as the GM for the Buffalo Bills. Of course, you can always find us on most social media and podcasting platforms and even on YouTube by searching The Wandering Buffalo Podcast. You can also find our show as well as other amazing shows and content by looking into the Built-in Buffalo Network on their podcasting platform. Great stuff that we got going on over here. Um, Justin, how are you doing tonight? Uh, I'm doing great. Getting a little bit of a later start than usual, but I got like this second wind of energy that is scaring me before bedtime, but I'm feeling good right now. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. It was a pretty long day for me as well, so we're going to power through it. And uh, oh, he's got some swing fuel there. Okay. Got to right. some swing fuel. <laughs> well, I was going to say let's break down some Buffalo Bills related news, but there hasn't been. Do you have any, any updates on Zach Ertz? Oh, Zach Ertz? I heard that he might come to the Bills. I heard he might not. We'll have to check in next week when <laughs> we deliver the same news again. Uh, I just uh, want it to be over. Anyways. Good stuff. Yeah, not much not much going on, which uh, we kind of talked about earlier. Is I feel like good news. We're kind of settling in and... The, mm-hmm. When it gets to the really, really dead time in the year when nothing's happening, it means the season's right around the corner, so I can't wait. Yeah, we're we're pretty close. I think we're like 60-something days. But Well, when this episode drops, I think we'll be like 62-ish days, if I'm not mistaken. But if I am, whatever. 60 days it is. Anyways, let's get into it. So the purpose of this exercise is for Justin and I to review all the major moves so that being like free agency trades and draft picks made by brandon bean and we're gonna do a like a synopsis of that for each year since he's been here if we tried going nitty-gritty for every single thing we this would be like a four hour long podcast at minimum (laughs) so we're gonna we're gonna try to encompass everything since like 2017 till now that being said um let's Take a trip back, Justin. The year is 2017, and the Bills have just fired the second best GM in the world, Doug Whaley. And yes, I'm being facetious. <laughs> they fired him after that 2017 draft where we picked uh, Deion Dawkins and Trey White. And this move was questioned by some people for the timing purposes of it. But ultimately, when the dust finally settled, the Pagulas went with Brandon Bean. We're going to try to do our best go, to go in chronological order here, but do you want to say anything before we get started? Yeah, just just a little bit on, you know, this is all kind of recent history, mm-hmm. but the, the bevy of moves that Brandon Bean has made, mm-hmm. and it's like all this stuff is within a three, three and a half year time frame now, um, and just looking at some of the stuff he did, and it's... Even the smaller moves that we probably won't talk about today, but like just refreshing in my head, remembering them mm-hmm. happening like this. I felt like this was going to be a little bit of a tedious exercise and it ended up being really fun for me. Like mm-hmm. we're, we're going to touch on him real soon, but a guy like EJ Gaines, who like didn't expect anything out of him, ended up being a pretty good starter. You know, had he not battled injuries like he was pretty good and yeah just things like that it it really it was like some short term nostalgia i really enjoyed it right right so with that being said oh real quick some takeaways that i got from this and i guess this is kind of a spoiler alert is that you were the bulk of this episode is going to come from the 2017 2018 era and that's when you can tell Beans like really going at going at the roster, looking at the 
books and everything and it, it definitely shows by the moves yeah and this is this is my uh or our trust the process air quotes episode of like looking back at all this like yeah some awesome moves were made mm-hmm. um really setting us up for the future but also there was some swings and misses mm-hmm. and you know trust the process is a really fun phrase i throw it around all the time it's kind of like my blanket statement when I don't feel like getting into a full fledged argument. Yeah. Um, but that being said, like being a McDermott have been great. Um, they really helped turn around the organization, but they're also not infallible. So this is kind of looking at both sides of the coin. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, let's dive, in. let's dive into the 2017 free agency or I'm sorry, trades because Bean came in after the draft. Right. So there were one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven trades. Um, the first one being the Cardell Jones trade. So we gave up Cardell Jones for a conditional seventh round pick to the Chargers. This was like a whatever move to me. It didn't. I didn't see him sticking around. So it was cool that we got something out of it. So I think it was a good move in my in my opinion. Now, if anybody has tuned into this podcast, you know that I cannot scout quarterbacks. Um, you loved so him, didn't you? I hated this trade. I was like, Cardell <laughs> Jones is that strong arm, kind of mobile quarterback. We didn't really have the answer on the roster. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we still had Tyrod at the time, and he was he was meh. He was okay. He was exciting at times. He was really bad at other times, and. In hindsight, it, it was really like the fan goggles of searching for the answer. And I was like, maybe it's Cardell Jones. It was yeah. never Cardell Jones, but I wanted to see him get more of a shot. And, you know, looking back at it, he never latched on or made any noise elsewhere. So right. I was wrong. Yeah. All right, <laughs> let's move on to the second move. So we got EJ Gaines and a second round pick from the Los Angeles Rams for Sammy Watkins and a sixth round pick. I originally didn't like this because Sammy was so good his first two seasons. And I thought maybe he would recapture some of that magic if he got the chance and stayed healthy. But it turns out I was wrong and the trade ended up being really solid. And, you know, Watkins didn't really like Buffalo as he mentioned (laughs) publicly. Nobody did. Right. And although we only got one good year from Gaines, as you mentioned earlier um, in this episode, I think this was a good move by Bean. Yeah, I I don't think there was a ton of people in Buffalo that liked this move at the time. And this was like, you know, part of what brings on like the bills are tanking, the bills are tanking. And honestly, looking at all the all the transactions from the 2017 season, like. Yeah, it looked like we were tanking. Um, Mm -hmm. Sammy Watkins was... He was somebody that I was really excited to have drafted, and it hurt me to see him go, but also at the time when we drafted him, I was like, yeah, this is great that we brought him in, but, like, why? Like, we we don't have (laughs) the infrastructure around him. Mm -hmm. Um, So, I mean... For me, this was really a move of like, we're, we're going to have to pay him good money and we're going to be in the same situation. So Bean came in and he was just clearing house to set up his own system. And, and right. that was just a domino that fell. So right. I think that worked out pretty well. Mm-hmm. Now let's talk about another quarterback. This one we shipped out. So we gave up Ronald Darby to the Philadelphia Eagles for Jordan Matthews and a third round pick. Darby, to me, in my opinion, was a quarterback, a man coverage cornerback, and coming into a zone cover scheme. So it just wasn't going to work out. So we got an okay wide receiver and a third round pick from, which is pretty good, in my opinion. So again, great move by Bean. And I'd agree. Um, Darby was a good player. Um, and he just kind of wasn't lining up with where the team was heading. And that's fine. That, that happens when the regime changes hands. 
Mm-hmm. Um, Jordan Matthews obviously didn't really work out, but none of our receivers did for quite some time there. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I think overall that one kind of worked out for both sides. Darby mm-hmm. was a pretty good player for the Eagles. Um, he battled some injuries, but overall I think he was a pretty solid player for a bit. Right, right. And then, you know, moving on to the next move, we, well, Brandon being shipped out, Reggie Ragland to the Chiefs for a fourth round pick. Again, wrong scheme player. So I thought it was a good move. Yeah, and I agree there too. I, I think Reggie Ragland had some potential, um, but he was kind of like that thumping linebacker. Um, and the defense was obviously moving more towards the Sean McDermott version of the linebacker where they have to be able to cover in space. They have to move sideline to sideline. You know, you're thinking Luke Keekley. And mm-hmm. when you put Luke Keekley next to Reggie Ragland, they they couldn't be more different. <laughs> Probably um, not. Ragland didn't really end up having an amazing career, um, mm-hmm. even in more of his system. So that's kind of like a win-win for me, but definitely coming in trying to put your pieces into place. He wasn't going to be a guy that fit with this defense. Right, right. Moving on to the next move. We gave up cornerback uh, uh, Kevon Seymour to the Carolina Panthers in return for Kalen Clay, a wide receiver, returner, dual special team player, and a 2019 seventh round pick. Uh, You know, this was kind of mute for me. I mean, we got a seventh round pick and a fringe roster wide receiver returner for a ri- fringe roster cornerback who, uh, if I'm not mistaken, was a late-round draft pick himself. So yeah. that being said, I think we got a two-for-one deal, but I'll say neither bad nor good for Bean for this move. But, yeah. Yeah, this, this is kind of a wash, and it's kind of like the, the start of... Bean toying around with the tail end of the roster and being able to accumulate picks and whatnot for people that aren't going to make the team. And mm-hmm. Not much to comment on there. Yeah. Let's move on to the second biggest trade move, in my opinion, during this 2017 season. Mr. Big Stuff, Marcel Darius. We shipped him off to the Jags for a conditional sixth round pick. And I'll be honest, I was not a fan of this move because... I thought maybe we could get something more than a conditional late round draft pick, but at that time, I didn't really understand roster construction and how it's interwoven with salary cap so tightly. So, and I was, I guess I was so invested in what we gave up to give them a high, high, a top five draft pick, right? So, for me, I was like, when we all we got was a conditional six round pick, like, come on. But, you know, after some reflection, this was clearly a great move. We got we got a team to pick up the big cap number on a lazy defensive tackle. And all in all, great move by Bean. Yeah, I I couldn't echo it any more than you just said it. I at the time I was like, we got a six round pick for Darius. Um, but when you when you factor in, the, Darius was like the Albert Hainsworth to me. Like he got paid, and we stopped seeing performance, and mm-hmm. just not the buy in that McDermott and Bean are demanding of you know the process. And everybody's got to be on the same page. Everybody has to be buying in equally. And you know, just even seeing what he did in Jacksonville, like there was nothing nothing monumental going on there, and. You know, we ate a lot of dead cap on that, but it was, you know, clearing house to make room for what we wanted to bring in. And it was kind of year one of we're going to have to take a bunch of pills today, but we mm-hmm. we got a couple of years to see how this all shakes out. Right, right. Moving on to the last big trade, and this was trade deadline in 2017, the notorious Calvin Benjamin trade. I... I literally thought this was the greatest move at the time. I can remember where I was. I was at 726 Broadway in New York City. 
up studying and my friend who's a big Eagles fan like tapped me on the shoulder he's like dude the Bills just traded for Calvin Benjamin I was like no way no way we got this dude I was like so hyped and I remember telling all my friends who were around me who were Giants fan with fans with the exception of my Philadelphia Eagle friend that the Bills were gonna go to the playoffs I mean I wasn't wrong we, we did Benjamin. go to the playoffs but Benjamin did not you know, like he was not an impact like I thought he was. We gave a third and a seventh for Calvin Benjamin. With the power of hindsight, let that sink in. <laughs> but at the time I thought it was good. And as I mentioned before, unfortunately, this is this is a pretty bad move by Bean and probably his worst move as the Bills GM, but at the time it seemed pretty good to me. Yeah, it, it's up there. Um, I was also very excited for Kelvin Benjamin. Um, and then I I remember going to a training camp practice at St. John Fisher and seeing him in person. And he was just, like, larger than life. But I remember, like, to my untrained eyes, just, like, I couldn't stop looking at him. And I was following him everywhere on the field. And it just looked kind of lazy to me and I was like you know he's such a good receiver he doesn't have to be giving his all in training camp it's fine Mm -hmm. and little did I know you know that's not fine you know I I remember going to uh, previous training camps and watching Stevie Johnson on the sideline and he had like this giant medicine ball and he was like after practice working and just looking shredded and just going to town and Calvin Benjamin, when I saw him, was just, you know, hanging out, whatever. Like, mm-hmm. I'm a pro, I got this. Um, but I think I think this was one of the most important moves being made oh, yeah. because it was a giant learning lesson. And we had the previous episode of, like, what's more impactful, wins or losses. And I think the Calvin Benjamin situation set up the, the paradigm shift for being... <laughs> And it was, we went away from, you know, the prototype of receiver that Bean had saw in Carolina with Devin Funches, Calvin Benjamin, tall. these these tall, big-bodied. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not going to give you much after the catch. They're not, you know, they're just big bodies. They're going to catch it at the point of attack and kind of shifted to, well, let's get guys that can get open, you know, smaller, shifty, elite route runners. But it also showed us that Bean was A, willing to take a big swing on something and make a move to make it happen, and B, a little bit further down the road, that he was willing to admit when he made a mistake and not reinvest in the mistake and move on from it. So, yes, this was a big L, but I think it was also a big learning moment that really helped in the long run. Right. And by some miracle, a.k.a. great coaching, the Bills ended the longest playoff drought in major sports that year for the time. It's because you said we were going to the playoffs. Yeah, I guess. Well, I got that from Adam Shine because he said, the Bills are going to the playoffs, and it really amped me up. I was like, we're going, we're going. And he was right. Anyways, that wraps up the 2017 season. So let's look at the 2018 season. Okay. I won't mention about, you know, well, I guess we can. We, we all know how the 2017 season ended. We didn't win the wild card game. It's that okay. Was a painful game. Yeah, it was, that was a boring game if you're not a fan of either of those teams. <laughs> that was, like, really boring. It was a boring game if you're a fan of those teams. Yeah. <laughs> Blake Bortles skirting down the sideline again. God. When they showed him Damn that it. he when he couldn't do that, like, dump off pass to, uh, what's his name? Oh, who's that running back for Tampa Bay right now? Uh, Leonard Fournette. Like, it missed his hand by, like, a foot. And it was just literally just a dump-off pass. And they were like, yeah, you know, the wind probably pushed it. I was like, you guys are in Florida. Like, I mean, the the wind can't be that bad. But, again, I don't throw a football professionally. But, yeah, whatever. Moving on to 2018. Let's look at the free agent moves that Brandon Bean made. 
I'll just kind of go down this list real quick and we can talk about some notable free agency moves. The Bills brought in Vontae Davis, Chris Ivory, Owa Odinwuza, Raphael Bush. One. Yeah, right. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Starler Latulale, uh, Julian Stamford, Trent Murphy, AJ McCarron, Russell Boldine, Marshall Newhouse, Jeremy Curley. Uh, let's see here. Tenny Palopi, Matt, Matt Barkley. And uh, Colton Schmidt. And some de departures. Sean Terrell Henderson, Preston Brown, Deontay Thompson, EJ Gaines, and Jordan Matthews. So, a lot of names here. I'm just going to go over the notable ones for me. Vontae Davis leading us off here. No surprise. I don't think this was a bad move by Bean. I just think it was a bad player. And... It was an unfortunate decision by the player, so you can't blame Beam for that. Uh, I'm going to elect to choose to not comment on Vontae Davis. <laughs> okay, we'll move on. I liked the it at the time. I was right, wrong. right. The star deal, that's another one. Five years, $50 million. He's basically uncuttable, as we know. This move is a little in the middle for me because I remember he said, don't expect much, uh, much. And he brought in Trent Murphy and star on relative, like I'm pretty sure Trent got nine and a half million dollars a year and star gets $10 million a year. And you know, with that kind of money, you expect, you know, some contributions to the team, but well, some, some, uh, you know, Trent really didn't move the needle for me. And Star, it, you know, we didn't really notice his absence until he was actually not there, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so both those moves kind of like, eh, for me. Best moves, Newhouse, Bodine, because we were going to cut him anyway and we got something out of it. Yeah, and uh, Trent Murphy, I was... I was on the fence when we signed him because he, he was good in Washington. But I remember at the time thinking like, well, this is a risky move, but if it works out, he could be awesome. But if it mm -hmm. doesn't, like, that's a lot of money tied up in him. And, you know, obviously we saw in hindsight that one didn't really work out. Um, Star Latulale, I think this might be the worst contract Bean has given out. And it's not even, like, egregious, but kind of since that contract, we've seen him kind of factor in, you know, after next season we have an out and we don't really have to eat dead cap and, and all that stuff that he puts into his contracts now. It and wasn't here. That that didn't <laughs> exist with Star. It was like, you're going to get $50 take million. My money. Dollars. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to get it. And... You know, I didn't really like the move at the time. I still don't love the contract or anything, but I do think he's ended up being a pretty valuable piece. Mm -hmm. Clearly. I think he's an upgradable player, um, but I do think that his absence was missed last year. Right, right. Any comment on the new house or Bodine trade? I know you love those. Uh, that's, that's my... Uh, that's one of my favorite things about being that's the the tinkering with the roster kind of players, you know, brought in for offensive line depth and kind of get down to you're getting close to cut day and you're like, eh, I don't think these guys are going to work out. And you end up being able to flip them for a couple late round picks. And, you know, those late round picks might not end up being anything either. But, you know, mm -hmm. instead of letting these guys walk for nothing, you end up getting something for them. Um, right. which kind of circles back to right at the beginning, Stefan Gilmore walked for nothing. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that was a big miss from this organization. And it was, it was right at the beginning, but could have done like a tag and trade or something. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I feel like Gilmore at the time was at least worth a, a one, maybe a two, but maybe. you know, he walked out of the door for nothing. So, yeah. Anyways. All right. Well, let's go into some trades that being pulled off. So we gave up quarterback 
Tyrod Taylor, and we give him to the Browns for a third round pick. Okay, so Tyrod to the Browns. I, I I got a lot of love for Tyrod. It was a great move, but I got a special place in my heart for Tyrod. Did you it, feel it was... horrible for Tyrod at the time and even oh worse God, later yeah. on? Oh, my God. Yeah, it was just like, man, this cannot get any worse. Yeah. And then he got the whole doctor thing in L.A. It was just like, what is going on? Like yeah, it, it was like, hey, man, thanks for helping us get over this playoff problem we're gonna send you to cleveland oh maybe you can help them with their playoff problem yeah and then you know i know he wasn't the long-term answer but like the way the way his career went after that and i see him like on social media and stuff like i love tyrod Mm -hmm. and like he's still happy go lucky he's the same same guy he's ever been but man he was he was dealt a rough set of cards. Yeah. Uh, the next move, we traded Cordy Glenn, the 21st overall pick, and a fifth round pick, which ended up being 158th overall, to the Bengals for a first round pick, ended up being 12th overall, and this and a sixth round pick being 187th overall. Yeah, so I didn't love this trade at the time because I liked I Cordy it. Glenn, <laughs> but it set up the Josh deal, so I have the benefit of hindsight and mm-hmm. now knowing that like Bean's always thinking two, three, four steps ahead. Like he knew mm-hmm. what he was doing. He he was he was posturing, and that worked out great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of people were saying the Bills were taking the Eagles' blueprint in terms of how they got Carson Wentz. And I could believe it. Like, they were trading away, getting more ammo to go up and up and up. The only difference is that the Bills made the playoffs, so they were, like, set a little far back. 21st and 22nd overall back-to-back picks. So they, they needed to they needed to get up. <laughs> Uh, the next move, we gave a seventh round pick for Corey Coleman, and at the time, I thought this was a okay move. Uh, like you know, maybe Corey Coleman, different city, different start. You know, he could be good. And I was wrong. I was wrong. Yeah, and I got gotten by that one too. But I'll I'll make that move seven days a week if I'm a GM. It's a yeah. low risk, high reward. Mm-hmm. If if Corey Coleman got his head on straight and played to his potential and everything, we'd be talking about that trade for years to come. And yeah. at the end of the day, it cost us, what, what was it, a seventh round pick? Yeah. Yeah. And he got cut whatever. and whatever. Yeah. Lastly, AJ McCarron to the Raiders for a fifth round pick. Again, whatever. McCarron wasn't doing anything. But it's beautiful. A fifth round pick, you know. Yeah, we take. We those. got Milano in the fifth round. Like, you know, it's yeah. worth taking a swing on a guy for you know whatever McCarron. We signed him and. Yeah, do you want McCarron or Milano? I'll take Milano. Thank you. Yeah. Anyways, let's transition to the draft of 2018. So, with the first round, first rounds pick that we got, uh, we got Josh Allen, Tremaine Edmonds. Didn't have a second round pick. Because we, you know, traded two second round picks to the Bucks to move up to get Allen, if I'm not mistaken. Then in the third round we got Harrison Phillips. The fourth round we got Teron Johnson. The fifth round we got Saran Neal, Wyatt Teller, and then the sixth round we got Ray Ray McLeod, and in the seventh round we got Austin Pearl. I'm just gonna go down these players and just tell you a quick my opinion on what if they were hits or not. Allen, Pitt, Edmonds. Hit. Phillips, meh. <laughs> Deron Johnson, hit. Uh, Saran Neal, hit. Wyatt Teller, hit. Ray Ray McLeod, missed. Austin Bro, super miss. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I pretty much agree. I think, um, I think the book's still kind of out on Harry, and this mm-hmm. is a big season for him. You know, he had a tough injury for a guy in the trenches. You know, you don't, 
it takes some time to bounce back from. Um, but when you're talking about, you know, Allen Edmonds, yep. Um, Taron Johnson. I'm going to say yes. He's uh, a starting cornerback in the NFL. Yeah, and he's got a lot to prove in a contract year right now, whether mm-hmm. or not we give him give him the bag. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you start talking about later round picks. Saran Neal, like he contributes on special teams oh, and yeah. has stuck around. Uh, Wyatt Teller, that one still hurts me. I remember at, I remember being at a preseason game, mm-hmm. and I think I might have told this story before. But he was just walking up and down the sidelines, getting anybody yeah. that would anybody that would work with him. He was doing reps. Everybody else was chilling at the end of a preseason game. He was working. I was like, Andy had the hair. Yeah, long I hair. Was like, yeah, I was like, this dude. But then when but, he went to the Browns, he shaved it off, and I think that's what actually made him good. Yeah, that so. was the turning point. But, you know. He was a hit. He was a hit. Um, I actually have Ray Ray as a hit, too. Um for being a six-round pick. He is a returner. He's still contributing in, t- in the league three years later as a six-round yeah, pick. I guess, yeah. That's the best kind of outcome you can expect if and, you're uh, Ray Ray. <laughs> Austin Pearl, had, he had the pedigree. He had to go somewhere. His dad yeah. was a legend. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, that this was an amazing draft, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. And, you know... Ray Ray still contributing, why tell her going elsewhere, but hit on damn near every pick, and that's right, a pretty yeah. sweet draft. Anyways, uh, after this draft, the Bills would go 6-10, and 10, and Brandon Bean, at the end of the season, I don't know if you remember this, sent out that long letter to season ticket holders about the bright future. Uh, it, it's something along the lines where he's like, as I, you know, wrap up the office and think about the future, I'm 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 happy, but I'm also a little sad about what happened this year. So I, I'm I'm really excited to work towards the future, and that's what we're gonna talk about. But first, we're gonna take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. We're going to pick things up with the 2019 season and Brandon Bean's moves, but I would be amiss if I didn't mention these players from the previous year, and I for it literally went right over my head, and Justin, during our break, brought it up. So, Justin, take it away. Yeah, so after that really good draft from Brandon Bean, he went right to the wire, Um we also brought in as undrafted free agents Levi Foss or I'm sorry Levi Wallace, Robert Foster, and Ike Botker. Um, now, Robert Foster, yeah, he's gone elsewhere at this point. He was amazing for the Bills for half of a season. He was really exciting. I remember. I know y'all are out there. Everybody thinking, oh, we found we found a number one receiver as an undrafted free agent. Uh, he gave us those feelings for a little bit, you know? Mm-hmm. Ike Bodker is still around as an undrafted free agent, and Levi Wallace, nobody's been able to take that job from him. Mm-hmm. Um, also in that offseason, we uh, claimed Jordan Phillips off of waivers. And, yeah, he went off and signed a big deal in in free agency and kind of showed that the season with the Bills was a flash in the pan. But he had some monster contributions for the Bills for a little bit. Right, right. Anyways, uh, thank you for reminding me that during the break. I really don't know how I how those two, those three guys went over my head, but they were key contributors and great moves by Brandon Bean. Yeah. So, and especially Levi, like he's still contributing to this day. Yeah. So, let's go into more moves by talking about the 2019 season. Season. Sorry. Let's look at the free agency. And again, I'm just going to go down the list of players. And when I read these list of players from the 2019 free agency, Justin, and you out there listening, think about if this player actually played, (laughs) you know, if they contributed, because this is a, this is, this is, this is one hell of a free agency. All right. Duke Williams, Spencer Long. Cole Beasley, John Brown, 
Frank Gore, Mitch Morris, John Feliciano, Ty Insecki, Tyler Croft, Kevin Johnson, Andre Roberts, the Adrian Waddle, Maurice Alexander, uh, Jake Fisher, EJ Gaines, the second coming, <laughs> Sonoris Perry, Quentin Spain, Christian Wade, Eli Harold, TJ Yeldon, Lee Smith, and Nico Siragusa. Yeah. Pretty much, like, I would say, if I'm not doing the math or anything, but I want to say, like, close to 80% of this list, or 75 of it, was playing for this team. Or, like, actually out on the field for not even just, like, one snap, like, oh, they got to go in just for, like, this. But they were actually out there contributing. <laughs> yeah, this was, uh, this was a great free agency class. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of those names you just rattled off, too, are, like, were brought in for that staples. offensive line depth. Mm-hmm. And then staples, you know. Lee Adrian Waddle, there's a couple other guys. This was like we dumped assets at the offensive line because we knew that had to be better. And then mm-hmm. you're talking guys, Cole Beasley, John Brown, Feliciano. Frank Gore was honestly pretty good for for his age and oh yeah, you know, his pedigree in the league. He he served a role. Then you got guys like Tyler Croft, did did he blow anybody's minds? No, but he was a reliable, serviceable starter. Mm-hmm. Uh, you bring in Mitch Morse. Ty Inseki was was great mm-hmm. in his limited role. We also, I don't know, I might have missed it, but we also brought in Andre Roberts on the on this free oh, agency. Oh, yeah, we, we did. And God, do I want him back. Two years, 5.1 million. Nothing. <sighs> Dear Andre we, Roberts, please come back to Buffalo. And then we got Quentin Spain for two million dollars that year, and he played extremely well. And he was didn't great. let up a sack. We flipped Eli Harold for Ryan Bates. Um, you know Jake Fisher, we cut him because we wanted him to be Lee Smith, and then we got Lee Smith. It, this this free agency was just amazing. I remember that year, I was like, oh my God, we, we signed another person. We signed another person. We signed another person. We had like $100 million or some some crazy number like that. And I was like, remember. this is why I cleared cap. Yeah, it was worth it. And then let's talk about some departures. There's four of them. <laughs> so Charles Clay went to the Cardinals. John Miller went to the Bengals. Logan Tom uh, Thomas went to the Lions. And Jordan Mills went to the Dolphins. I'm cool. All those players can go. Yeah, Logan Thomas ended I up. I do like Logan though. Logan ended up. Logan. He ended up He's showing being that out a little guy, bit, but okay, but, you know, it took him forever to get there. Yeah, and that here we are with Dawson Knox, who we're about to draft. You know. Yeah, Logan and everyone's Thomas. like, "Oh my God, Dawson needs to come around right now." And Logan Thomas is literally doing. He's li- Dawson Knox is literally on. The Logan Thomas. Yeah, path. and it, it's literally the, the like they were converted quarterbacks. Like all that's the same, but Dawson Knox is just a top tier athlete. Like he's up there with the best of them in the league as far as athleticism. I know mm-hmm. we we haven't even drafted him yet, but imagine if we gave Logan Thomas one two more years, and you know may, maybe the chain of change of scenery is what did it for him, but. He put up some numbers. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. There were no trades, if I'm not mistaken. Brandon Bean had a plan, and he stuck to it. And we are going to go right into the 2019 draft. First round pick, Ed Oliver. So far, so good. Second round pick, Cody Ford. To be determined. He hasn't proven anything in the league, let's be honest, but I do have high hopes for him. Devin Singletary in the third round contributor he contributes to this offense whether you like him or not he does contribute again in the third round dawson knox it's to be determined he again does contribute fifth round pick we did not have a fourth we got voshan joseph miss the sixth round pick we got jaquan uh, Jaquan johnson contributor special teams hit seventh round daryl johnson hit contributor special teams pretty good 
And then we also got uh, in the seventh round, Tommy Sweeney. I'm going to say TBD because, you know, he got hurt. He, I, didn't he like, break his foot? Wasn't he? Or maybe I'm mixing that up. Something kept him off the off the roster his rookie year and then the next year he got COVID and then he got the MI so it was like oh okay like it yeah. just wasn't a good deal of cards for him he had a great preseason while he was yeah. on the field yeah he did um, there were a couple trades though they were there yeah this, uh, we did uh, the Eli Harold we shipped off oh, the, the, the stuff that I mentioned yeah yeah well we had a good one there we got rid of Zay Jones Oh my! Well, oh yeah, we late, did. It was we later did. in the season, but uh, oh my god! Not technically a bean pick. That was uh, when McDermott did the draft, but yeah, I'm, I guess I'm thinking. Well, yeah, he's it's still moved by Bean. Yeah, or, well said. Yeah, completely forgot about that. That that ended up being great. You remember when yeah. Zay Jones was on TMZ, like because he was at a hotel and he was like. Busted his foot through a glass door and yeah, butt ass naked, and I was like, "What? Like, <laughs> <I>, okay." <laughs> Anyways, the Bills would end up going ten and six that season. Great, great move. Um, and it was, it was one of the best seasons that I've ever saw, seen as a Buffalo Bills fan. We all know how that season ended. We lost to Houston in the wild card game. A stinger of a loss, but in most impactful wins and losses that we're going to mention again, that is a, a very impactful loss. And that sets us up for the 2020 season. Anything you else want to say about the 2019 season, Justin? No, man, that's, that's all for 2019. I'm pretty psyched for what we did in 2020, though. All right, so let's get into that free agency. We brought in Mario Addison. We lost Jordan Phillips. We lost Shaq Lawson. We brought in AJ Klein. We brought in Vernon Butler, Quentin Jefferson, Tyler Minikavich, Josh Norman. Kevin Johnson went to Cleveland. Daryl Johnson... We uh, or I'm sorry, Dale Williams came to Buffalo. Taiwan Jones came back to Buffalo after he hurt us in that wild card game. <laughs> so these signings, you know, they are contributors. They they definitely contributed. I don't think this free agency worked out the way I had envisioned it, and I think it's clear because Norman's gone. Jefferson's gone. Butler took a pay cut. Addison took a pay cut. And AJ Klein's just like, please just don't play. <laughs> I, I don't I don't really know what else to think about that. And you know, for the departures, Shaq Lawson, I did want him to stay. You know, he said like, eh, you know, the number's a little off and end up going to Miami and he got flipped and now he's in Houston. Jordan Phillips, I didn't want to pay the guy and now we see why. <laughs> and Kevin Johnson, or you, it didn't really work out in Cleveland. So, yeah i I don't love this free agency, but I like the idea of it. So, like, it's like the inverse of the last free agency. Like, they tossed so many resources at the offensive line. They were like, "All right, now let's do it for the defense." <laughs> yeah, and I think Addison's okay. Butler, Jefferson, I, I mean, this to me was like we targeted, we need to improve the defensive line. And I like the idea that we didn't give Jordan Phillips a huge contract because, um, mm -hmm. you know, he goes out to Arizona and kind of shows that the production he had in Buffalo was kind of flash in the pan. Mm -hmm. Shaq Lawson, I could go either way on, to be honest with you. Um, I liked him as a player at times. I, did I want to give him a fat contract? No, not really. Um, so mm -hmm. kind of going after replacing these players in free agency was, you know, it was cool on paper, but kind of like seeing the results of how that worked out was like, hey, 
we still need to fix this area, which kind of leads into the following draft of, you know, this is how we really need to address it with draft and develop. So it was like, to me, looking back at it, it's like maybe they were looking at this as a short-term Band-Aid. Maybe they thought that they had the answer, but it ended up being the Band-Aid, you know? Yeah. Well, sometimes the Band-Aid work... Uh, I'm sorry. The Band-Aid tactic works when your roster is pretty solid. And I think we can get away with this one. It's not like what we did in the past where it was like Band-Aid on top of Band-Aid on top of Band-Aid. It was just like one Band-Aid. We've signed a, or we drafted a running back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we're going to be great. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Anyways, let's talk about the 2020 draft. But we would be amiss if we didn't talk about this big trade. We gave the first round pick to Minnesota for Stefan Diggs. We gave a 22 that year. We gave up a fifth, a six. And I think, uh, what? Uh, what Future was four, the following and year a, of four. Yeah, and this most recent draft, fourth for that pick, for Stefan Diggs. And boy, was it worth it? <laughs> I, I, that's all I'm going to say about that. What, what, what are your comments on the yeah, big trade? I, I would give up more. I'd do it again. Yeah, I, I think it's a, a unique situation that you don't see very often in the NFL, right? Where, where both teams kind of it works out for both of them. Mm-hmm. You know, if we sat where we sat and drafted Justin Jefferson, he had the season he just had in Minnesota. I would have been cool with that too, but mm. it worked out for both sides. Stefan Diggs needed a change of scenery, and I'm going to have to uh, go out and get myself an actual Diggs jersey instead of the one that I converted that was, right. what was it? Uh, Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick, Joe Webb, uh, Jeremy Curley, <laughs> Watkins. It was all of them. There there yeah. was like six numbers on that. I changed it to Dig It. But oh my God! He deserves an actual jersey at this point. <laughs> right, right. So let's go through the rest of that draft. First round pick, as we just mentioned, didn't have it. We got Diggs. Second round pick, we got AJ Epinesa. Third round, Zach Moss. Fourth round, Gabriel Davis. We had two fifths. One we again went to Minnesota. The second, we got Jake Fromm. And the sixth, we got Tyler Bass, Isaiah Hodgins. And we also had another six, but again, went to Minnesota. We had two sevens. One went to the Browns. And with our last pick, we got Dane Jackson. Yeah, Everyone in this draft, right, is a to-be-determined. And although some picks are showing a little promise already, that being Gabriel Davis... Jake Fromm. No, I'm just kidding. Not Jake Fromm. <laughs> Tyler Tyler Bass. And, you know, I'll throw him out there. You know, Dane Jackson a little bit. It, it It's looking okay so far. We'll see, though. Yeah, it, it's too early for me to give my full opinion on this draft class. But mm-hmm. especially with the weird offseason and COVID and all that, all that crap, uh, I thought AJ Epinesa looked pretty good at the end of the last season. Um, Zach Moss had a, an even wilder rookie season with injuries and all mm-hmm. that, but he showed some promise at times. Gabriel Davis looked amazing. Uh, yeah. He's one that I'm kind of concerned about. Like, was that some rookie flash or is that, you know, consistent? Because so much of what he did was like off of broken plays and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, Jake Fromm for me at the time was a wasted pick and to me it's still a wasted pick i don't i don't really ever intend on seeing him play any snaps at quarterback i'm not excited yeah. for it bass was awesome mm-hmm. hodgins he's making some noise again but we'll see what happens he's got an uphill climb and will dane jackson be the guy to take the job from levi we'll see we don't know Many have tried, many have failed. Right, right. Why don't you die? 
that's probably what all the quarterbacks are saying when Levi ends up taking the spot. Like, why? Makes why the you? tackle? It's third and eight, and Levi Wallace makes the tackle at seven yards. Yeah, if you're a cornerback playing for the Bills, you got to tackle. Like, yeah. you can't be afraid to get up in there. <laughs> and I will say this. Tyler Bass had a rough start to his career, and I remember all my friends, we go to my, my friend, we, we call him Cub, and there were, there was a time where everyone was like, oh, God, no, not not Tyler Bass, not him, Bass's ass, all this other stuff. And I I was like, guys. Like, Is that we, Joe Larkin? No, 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 it wasn't Joe Larkin. Because he switched that saying if that was him. <laughs> no, no, I was just like saying like, guys we gotta we gotta give him some time like dude he's terrible he's terrible like well no one comes out literally perfect right and tyler bass is is, he's no exception to that rule like yeah he he started off rough but he also broke wasn't it like two records his rookie year yeah like made two consecutive 50 plus yarders and uh Arrowhead Stadium, which had never been done, and broke a rookie for the most points or something like that. So, plus he I wears think the that, one eye black. Yeah, I That's think that cool. worked out pretty well. And you know, I'm not not saying Tyler Bass was the catalyst here, but the Bills did go 13 and three in 2020, <laughs> made it to the AFC Championship game where he did break that record in Arrowhead Stadium. Now, did we win that game? No. But, but we put points on the board because of him. <laughs> he did it. That's true. With that being said, that brings us up to date with the most f- f- recent free agency and you know trade moves. Yeah, we could talk about this most recent draft, but that's even the book is not even remotely close to being done on any of those picks. Like we just got them. Like yeah. so. Well, I also have from from that year. We also. Extended uh, McDermott. Oh, yeah. Let's fucking go. Mm-hmm. Well, we also extended uh, the Snowman. Oh, Milano. Yeah, that too. Uh, um, Deion Dawkins. Daryl Williams. We signed Daryl Williams. We extended Deion Dawkins. We extended Trey. John Feliciano. And it just kind of like shows me that like how many years did we watch Bill's football where it's like. This guy's okay. He's pretty good. Yeah. He go bye bye. The players would be, you know, playing well, and then we'd just let him walk. And mm-hmm. it kind of like set up this new culture for me, of like, if you play well, we're gonna keep you, and we're going, we're gonna pay you. And like players around the league notice that, and like it's not a coincidence to me that players are wanting to come here. Like maybe it wasn't the snow all along. Right. Maybe it was like, oh, you made the Pro Bowl. You're up for a contract. Bye. Yeah. You know, and I I think the the combination of Bean and McDermott have have really shifted the narrative of of what Buffalo Bills football is all about. Yeah. And my overall analysis of Brandon Bean is this: he's not bulletproof. He's not bulletproof, right? But he's batting at a really high average right now. Something that no other GM that I've seen in my lifetime can say. And we're lucky, Bills fans, to have a competent general manager and a front office that we have at one Bills drive. So say it with me. We are lucky. <laughs> I thought you were anything single else, Bills. <laughs> no, no, anything else? No, I I mean, you, you said it great there. Um, right. The trust the process, I, as much as I like to say it as a joke and whatnot, like I, I fully trust Brandon Bean. Mm-hmm. And it's the hindsight thing of like, did I trust Doug Whaley? Did right, I trust, right. you know, the people before them? Like, mm. yeah, yeah. In my head, yes, but no, I never yeah. really did. And we could, you know, we could talk more about the, the most recent free agent signings. Like, uh, oh my God, why is his name escaping me? quarterback bears oh mitch Mitchell trubisky. trubisky we could talk about that move but we've already mentioned our talking points on that great 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 backup quarterback greatest room uh quarterback room in the nfl but 
we, we're gonna let this we're gonna let this uh turkey cook a little longer and then kind of talk about it when we have a little more hindsight because that that's what starts great discussion anyways uh, oh go top, ahead. top five contract in the nfl by the way easily easy. easily anyways that's gonna wrap it up for this week's episode next week we have a challenger for the belt justin yes we do yes we do <sighs> let's go <laughs> but first Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and review our podcast as well as other amazing shows that you can find on the Built in Buffalo Network. We're always looking for guests on the show, so reach out to us for on our social media platforms if you're interested by searching the Wandering Buffalo podcast. Justin, where can the people find you if they want to challenge you for that belt? You can find me at jgods22. I'll be the guy wearing the belt. I'll see you next week. Right, right. And you can always find me on social media by searching two jangs that's gonna do it for us tonight we hope everyone enjoys the rest of their week and of course and always go bills, bills.